I'm Thomas, and I'm a sex researcher. When I was in grade school, I remember the one thing that we were taught about STIs is that you didn't want to get one. And then I took a college class on health thinking I would learn some more when pretty much the professor told us about some STIs, showed us some photos, and then made comments about how they were gross and yucky. And I remember him even telling the class, why would anyone want to be with you if you ever had that? Basically, I was never given the real facts about STIs because everyone was so busy trying to scare me about what they were and basically trying to scare me to not have sex. Yeah, it's true that STIs are not pleasant. No one's running around saying I wish I had an STI. But telling an entire class of college students, the age group for which the prevalence is the highest, that if they get an STI, they're gross, it's not helping. In fact, it's just stigmatizing someone that has an STI even more. Research has shown many times that feeling more stigma about STIs is associated with waiting longer to go see a doctor and not telling your sexual partners for fear of rejection. So what happens then? The infection gets worse and you risk passing it on, which might be how you got it in the first place, because someone was afraid to get tested or afraid to tell you that they had an STI. It's also possible that if someone's given you an STI or you've given one to someone, they may not have known it and you may not have known it. But even if you did have symptoms, would you know what to look for? There are basically two different types of STIs, bacterial and viral. Bacterial STIs include things like chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, while viral infections include things like HIV, AIDS, herpes simplex, and human papillomavirus. For the rest of the episode, we're gonna focus on the bacterial STIs, which can all be transmitted via oral, anal, or vaginal sex and they can all be easily treated. We're gonna start with chlamydia. It's the most common bacterial STI, and the CDC estimates 1.4 million new cases in the US annually, and about 61 million globally, the most occurring between people 15 and 19 years old. Chlamydia is sometimes known as the silent STI because symptoms don't appear for a long time, and a lot of people with penises don't have them at all. When symptoms are present, they include a clear to yellow discharge from the urethra of either the penis or vulva, a burning or discomfort during urination, unexpected vaginal bleeding from the vulva, or pain and swelling of the scrotum and testes. If untreated in the vulva, it can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease, or PID, which is when the bacteria spread from the cervix upward and infects the lining of the uterus fallopian tubes, and even possibly the ovaries and abdomen. In some cases, the infection can be so bad that it can make future pregnancy difficult. This isn't to scare you as much as let you know that you should get tested regularly, and that way if you do have it, you can get treated earlier. Getting chlamydia taken care of is really easy. All you have to do is take some antibiotics, either one large dose or smaller doses over the course of a week. And that's it. It's all taken care of. Next is gonorrhea, which is also known as the clap or the drip. And it's the second most common STI, and it's estimated there are about 320,000 new infections per year in the US. And again, a lot of people don't have symptoms. About 5 to 20% of people with a penis, and a whopping 70 to 80% of people with a vulva have no symptoms. When symptoms are present, they include painful urination and a thick white and yellow discharge. Now it's super rare, but it's possible if untreated that gonorrhea can enter the bloodstream and spread throughout the body. Now this can cause permanent organ damage and even arthritis. With gonorrhea, the sooner you're treated, the better. Treatment includes a shot and a couple pills. The last one I'm gonna tell you about today is syphilis. The number of new cases each year is estimated to be 27,000 and increasing at about 15% each year. Syphilis happens in stages, so it's really important that you get treated as soon as possible. The first stage is when a red painless sore appears about 10 to 90 days after exposure, but then it disappears after three to six weeks. So a lot of people think it's gone or that it must have been something else. But then it returns six weeks later. But this time, it can appear all over the body. This will then again disappear after a few weeks. At this point, it doesn't show back up outside the body, but it's wreaking havoc inside. It can damage internal organs like the heart, brain, bones, joints, even the eyes. In some cases, it can lead to dementia, blindness, stroke, or even death. These consequences generally don't appear for 10 to 20 years after initial infection, but you could never have symptoms or they could just disappear. Treatment during the early stages of syphilis is really simple. It's just one shot. 
There are inherent risks when it comes to engaging in sex, and it's important that you know what they are when you decide to have sex with someone. If you're going to have sex, the best way to avoid an STI is by getting tested with your partner and always using a condom for protection. Getting tested for bacterial STIs is easy and usually includes just peeing into a cup. Remember, if you or someone you know has an STI, there's no shame in it. It happens. I mean, it literally happens to millions of people per year. The best thing you can do is get it taken care of and take steps to avoid it better in the future. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I've got a lot of content in production and I don't want you to miss out. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. And in the meantime, check out one of these other videos. And don't forget to send me your questions about sex to thomastalksabout at gmail.com.